In this video, we're going to look at common drain amplifiers. Now, these amplifiers tend to have very large input impedances, very small output impedances, and gains close to one. So these circuits make good buffers. Let's take a look at what happens as the input signal voltage swings high or low. Imagine that the voltage here at the gate starts to rise. That then causes the gate source voltage to rise a little bit, which subsequently increases the drain current. As the drain current rises, it causes the source voltage to rise as well. How far can it rise? Well, it will rise until the gate source voltage is nearly equal to the threshold voltage, because that's when the transistor starts to switch off. What I'm getting at here is that the gate source voltage, if the transistor is on, is always going to be very similar to the threshold voltage. Maybe a little bit more if you have a lot of current flowing. But this is a good rule to remember. Because the voltage here is almost always the threshold voltage, it means that rises in voltage at the gate are reflected over here at the source. The same logic applies to voltage falls. This is why the gain of the common drain amplifier is about one. The gate voltage rises, the source voltage rises. They rise and fall together. Let's work some example problems though to see how you can find accurate expressions for the gain. Here we're going to be estimating the overall gain if we don't know the threshold voltage very well. And that's really typical with MOSFET circuits. First, let's do a DC analysis to make sure that this transistor is in saturation. Well, the drain voltage is just 10 volts all the time because it's attached to a 10 volt power supply. How about the gate voltage? Well, the gate voltage is given by 10 volts over a voltage divider here. This works out to 7.5 volts. Let's write it on our circuit. Now our source voltage is going to be lower than our gate voltage, provided that the transistor is in saturation. But we don't know exactly what our threshold voltage is. That's okay, let's just make sure that it works for all of the possible threshold voltages here. So it's going to be 7.5 minus some fuzzy value between two to four. This means that our source voltage is going to be some slightly unknown, uncertain voltage between 5.5 and 3.5 volts. For this entire range of voltages, we have high, medium, and low, drain, gate, and source, the transistor is always in saturation. That's okay. Where we could run into problems with this circuit, for example, would be a situation where the gate voltage is, say, three volts, because then it would be okay if the threshold voltage is only two, but we'd have a problem if the threshold is four, because if our gate's at three and the threshold is four, the transistor might not be on. We don't necessarily need to do it, but let's find our DC drain current. Our drain current here is our source voltage divided by the one kilo ohm resistor. So given the range that we have here, it's going to be 3.5 to 5.5 milliamps. In this case, it's fine as long as the data sheet for whatever transistor you're using allows that particular drain current to flow. You've not exceeded the maximum, for example, then you ought to be okay. Let's proceed to our AC analysis. The AC analysis in general for MOSFETs tends to be somewhat simpler than the AC analysis for bipolar transistors because we don't really have to worry about impedance reflection because we have a very high input impedance. The gate's not really attached to the drain or the source, so we don't have to worry about current being shared across the transistor. That really simplifies things a lot, doesn't it? So here on this circuit, we have our signal, our signal impedance of one kilo ohms, and now we have an input impedance, assuming we have large capacitors here, of one mega ohm in parallel with three mega ohms. That gives us 750 kilo ohms here for our input impedance. Now, how about our gain segment here? What should the gain be for a common drain amplifier? Well, we've already pointed out that if you have some small voltage increase at the gate, we expect it to show up down here at the source as a small voltage increase as well. That means that the gain should really be one when you're not thinking about voltage dividers. For common drain amplifiers, we can just write a one there at the voltage source. 
on the circuit, you can imagine that that voltage source sits right here. So in principle, it's just connected to these two resistors that are in parallel with one another. In fact, there will be a little bit of a resistance between that source and the two resistances that we could think about as being a load. And that resistance has a value of one divided by the transconductance. In common drain amplifiers, we can often neglect it. In this example, we'll just neglect it by saying that it's small. We have a one kilo ohm resistor here, and then from the AC signals standpoint, this capacitor is a short circuit, so we have a 10 kilo ohm load resistor over here. One divided by the transconductance usually gives a resistance of a few tens of ohms. So the reason I can neglect it here is because a few tens of ohms relative to a thousand or 10,000 ohms is a small number. So the voltage divider set up here is not gonna be very serious. Let's go ahead and find the net gain here. So we have an input voltage divider. Usually with MOSFETs, that's a number really close to one. We have a gain segment. And then here we have an output voltage divider that's also one since I'm neglecting that small resistance right there. So this works out to be 0.999 and you can see that common drain amplifiers make pretty good buffers, don't they? I simulated this on LT Spice with a 2N7002 resistor and the gain worked out to be 0.97. So this is actually a really accurate estimate of the gain. Let's look at another example. This is the data sheet for a 2N7002 transistor. And I'm interested in knowing what the transconductance is. We're going to have to use this in the second example. The data sheet tells us for this particular transistor, we can expect a typical value of the transconductance of 320 millisiemens. But that's measured at a drain current of 200 milliamps. In the next example, I'm going to set things up so that the drain current is only 100 milliamps. What value of the transconductance should we use? Well, at 200 milliamps, we're somewhere at this point on the curve, and the slope of this line should correspond to the 320 millisiemens that the data sheet tells us. How does the slope of that line change if I instead operate at 100 milliamps? Well, we can see quite clearly that the slope is going to be a little shallower. So I'm going to just now estimate a new value of the transconductance for our operating point. I think that the transconductance is going to be a number around 200 millisiemens if we operate that transistor at a drain current of 100 milliamps. We can also see that a typical value of the threshold is 2.1 volts. Let's now use these two values to try to estimate the overall gain of this common drain circuit. Let's start with a DC analysis. Our gate voltage is going to be a little bit lower than 10 volts because of this voltage divider here. Six volts in this problem. Our source voltage is going to be below the gate voltage by some number that's close to our threshold voltage and we just have to remember that this is a fuzzy number here. Our drain current is then our source voltage divided by our source resistance, which here is 39 ohms or 100 milliamps. We have a drain at 10 volts, a gate at 6 volts, and a source at 3.9 volts. Therefore, this MOSFET is in saturation. That's good. That's what we want. Let's move on to the AC analysis. Since the drain current is 100 milliamps, I confirmed from the data sheet that the transconductance should be something like 200 millisiemens here. Let's draw a small signal equivalent circuit for our amplifier. Here we have our signal and our one kilo ohm signal impedance. Let's assume that the capacitors are large so that we can neglect them. There's no high pass filter at the input side that we want to deal with here. The input impedance is thus just 1 mega ohm in parallel with 1.5 mega ohms. That works out to be 600 kilo ohms when you plug in the numbers. This is a common drain amplifier, so we have a voltage source here with a gain of 1. That voltage source sits right here in our original circuit diagram. I'm now not going to neglect 
the little resistance caused by the transconductance of our transistor, it's nonetheless going to be small. One divided by GM here gives me five ohms. That's pretty small relative to 39 ohms and 100 ohms, but it's not small enough to totally neglect. The 100 ohm resistor is our load, so now we have everything we need in order to find the gain of this amplifier. So the gain is given by three different fractions. First, we have our input voltage divider. Then we have our controlled source, which is a gain of one here. And then we have our output voltage divider. So we have these two resistors in parallel. Then we have our channel resistance. And then finally, the 39 in parallel with 100. So when we plug in numbers, we find that, as expected, the input voltage divider is very nearly equal to 1, and that's almost always the case with MOSFET circuits. We have a rather small load here, only 100 ohms, so we are going to have a bit of an output voltage divider here, but it's still quite good at 0.85. When you multiply everything together, you get 0.847 for the gain. On the other hand, our transconductance of 200 millisiemens was just an estimate. It might not really be the transconductance. If the transconductance is only 80 millisiemens, then the gain drops to 0.69. So that's something to keep in mind when you design these circuits. You can expect substantial swings in the gain if your estimate of the transconductance is off a little bit. I simulated this circuit in LT SPICE and the gain came out to be 0.825 we calculated a gain of 0.847. So these numbers are quite similar, but I'm still not confident that if I were to actually build the circuit that the gain would be this high. It might really be closer to 0.6 or 0.7 if we got a bad transistor from the drawer. Let's work one more example here with common drain amplifiers, and I'm again going to return to the data sheet. We know roughly what the transconductance is when the current is 200 milliamps. That's roughly the slope of this line. In the last problem, we checked what the transconductance is, or we estimated it rather, when we were operating at 100 milliamps. But in the next example, we're going to be operating at a drain current of only 10 milliamps. So we're way down close to the x-axis on the next problem. I'm going to make a guess that the transconductance is a much smaller number let's say 20 millisiemens, more than a factor of 10 below what it was at 200 milliamps. Obviously, we're going to expect a lot of variation in the transconductance when we're at that part of the graph where we have a lot of curvature. Let's nonetheless use it in order to find the gain of this circuit. And again, I'm going to estimate a threshold voltage of 2.1 volts. We'll start off with a DC analysis to make sure that the transistor is in saturation. Our gate voltage is going to be 10 volts times our voltage divider here, or 6 volts. Our source voltage down here is going to be about a threshold below our gate voltage, or 3.9 volts. Our drain voltage is at 10 volts, so we have a high voltage at the drain, a medium voltage at the gate, and a low voltage at the source. This transistor should be in saturation. That's what we want. That's okay. Let's go ahead and find the drain current. So the drain current should be our source voltage divided by our 500 ohm resistor. That comes out to be 7.8 milliamps. So my estimation of the transconductance, which I thought about around 10 milliamps, should be very similar at 7.8 milliamps. Anyway, it's just a guess, as you saw from the data sheet. Let's proceed to the AC analysis and try to get an estimate here of the gain of the entire amplifier. We'll make a small signal equivalent circuit. So we have our signal, and then we have our one kilo ohm signal impedance. We'll assume that the capacitors are large so that we don't have any undesirable filters here. And our input impedance is just going to be given by one mega ohm in parallel with 1.5 mega ohms. That's 600 kilo ohms. We have a common drain amplifier, so I know that when I write this controlled source here, I can just put a 1 next to it. On our original circuit diagram, I can imagine that the source sits right here. So we have a small resistance that we can imagine when we're drawing the rest of our AC equivalent circuit. 
and the resistance there is 1 divided by the transconductance. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that resistance on our circuit. 1 divided by our transconductance here is 50 ohms. The smaller the drain current, the larger that resistance tends to be. That resistance is attached to a 500 ohm resistor and then through the capacitor to our load resistance of 1 kilo ohm. And there's our load voltage. So our overall gain of this amplifier is given by three different expressions. First, we have our input voltage divider. Of course, we expect that number to be quite close to 1 since it's a MOSFET circuit. We then have our gain, which for a common drain amplifier is 1, and then we have our output voltage divider. This output voltage divider is usually not too serious for MOSFET circuits. When you multiply everything together, we get a gain of 0.868. If your load resistance is larger or your source resistance is larger, then that can compensate for the voltage divider there set up by the transconductance a little bit. But one thing to keep in mind is that you can always expect a certain amount of variation with these MOSFET circuits relative to the case with the bipolar transistors. I simulated this circuit on LT SPICE and it told me that the gain should be 0.945. So again, more variation than what you would expect with bipolar transistors. In the next video, we're going to look at the last MOSFET configuration, the common gate configuration.